Hey, Billy from Permapastures Farm, and today I'm gonna to show you a pretty cool hack. Um, okay, so we have a situation where the charger for the electro fences that we have down there for the chickens and the sheep, it's gotten a little far away, and we've basically been waiting around a while um, to figure out the best way to go about doing this. And honestly, I'm just going to use a technique and a method that we've used many, many times before in I think the last three properties we've been at. And you can go about this a couple of different ways. So let's say you have animals that you have remotely out there. Let's say that they're quite a ways away. Well, the, the typical solution for a lot of this stuff is going to be to just go ahead and either use a solar charger or a battery charger. But in this case, I got the solar charger, but the problem is when you run that thing through a chicken fence, you're going to find out your output voltage isn't necessarily what you want to keep things in. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to have to boost up the voltage because honestly, if you have a feral dog, I mean, I've seen it many times before. If you have a feral dog or anything else out there that wants your birds, if you have only a thousand volts going through that, I promise you it's not going to work. And uh, I can explain in the future somehow how we lost about 150 birds at one time because a couple of feral dogs got in there when the voltage wasn't high enough. So I'm going to show you a way around that. So let's say all you have is the typical garden variety charger that you get from Tractor Supply. Now we've gotten some really nice ones in the past. For some reason since the move, I've not been able to find them. But hey, this is what we have. So I have a fence I need to get all the way down there. Now I got one of two ways we can go about this. And one way was in the past to go ahead and leave this in the garage and run out some insulated wire. And in this case, it was number 12 wire. And I got news for you folks. That number 12 wire is good for 600 volts. This bad boy was putting somewhere around 8,000 volts through it. So your insulation ain't gonna last very long when that happens. So here's our solution. I got an outdoor receptacle right here on the porch and Michelle went ahead the other day and strung out some of this um, um, uninsulated wire. I think it's number 16. It's whatever we had laying around. And for, thankfully the owners before us had already had, I mean, they, they've, when I talk about ground rods, man, they've got probably 12, 13 ground rods around this place. You don't need anywhere near that much. We don't live in the desert. So anyway, I'm going to take this and I'm gonna show you this really cool tethering method that I came up with a while ago out of necessity. And we've been using it for years. It works and it works well. So if you have to get a charge, a high charge to a fence out there, you don't wanna mess with it all the time. Let's say you don't wanna mess with the solar thing. You don't wanna do the battery thing. Well, use this uninsulated wire, get it above the ground and you're ready to rock and roll. Now in this particular case, Michelle went out and she pounded a bunch of, uh, T posts from here all the way to the end of the property. Okay. Well, like I said, this thing's good for 30 miles. Well, okay. Well, we, we, we're not going 30 miles. Um, we're going substantially less. So she pounded a bunch of stuff out there, put insulators on it and got it up to the house where we got the power. So all we're going to do in a nutshell is take this boost up the power where I want it. And then I'm going to tether no matter where these animals are, I'm going to tether it to where they are. And it makes it simple. It's, it's night and day. All you got to do is unplug this thing. Or you could use some other means. You could have insulated alligator clips and go about it that way. All you have to do is unplug this thing, move your animals. When you go back to the house, plug it back in, bam, you're done. So it's simple. It's really that simple. So let's show you how it's done. All right, so this is the fence and that's it really it. We'll call it a wire. This wire runs the whole length of the property that way. And the other end, you just saw me uh, put the charger on the uh, side of the steps and uh, all we have to do is plug it in. Ground goes to the ground rod and the other part goes to this. So this is gonna be charged. This number 12 wire that I was using 
and we just kind of stretch it wherever we needed it. This, this is the only thing that's going to happen with this is I'm going to take this. I could cut it down, but really, and in the past, I've done it with insulated alligator clips. Uh, some of the hooter bandits out there probably call them roach clips, but they're alligator clips on this farm. Anyway, strip off a little bit of wire and it's really this simple. Just wrap it on there. Make sure it doesn't hit any other metal. All I'm gonna do is take the other end, which I think is already stripped, and I'm gonna put it on the sheep fence exactly the same way. I'm not even gonna worry about if I hit the very end of it. A lot of people think when you mess with this Premier One netting, that you have to get it on the metal cleats where the fence joined, that's not necessary. All you have to do is do the very same thing I did here and it'll induce enough voltage. If you don't, if you don't, if you prefer it not to do that way, because you can always, you can always situate this thing in such a way that makes sense where you can actually put it at the opening of the fence. Otherwise, you just take this insulated part and I'm just gonna wrap it around the same way I did here. I'm not gonna worry about weaving it in between. That monofilament line that goes through there will absolutely induce enough voltage to make this thing, I think when it's all said and done, it'll probably be in somewhere in the neighborhood of about six to 8,000 volts. You only need 3,000 for a cow, so this ain't gonna be a problem. So now that that's done, we have a tether going out from the trunk line, and we'll call it a trunk line. The main line going wherever, it, wherever you want it to go. In our particular case, it splits right down the middle of the property. So it's really this simple, folks. We put a little tether from here to the sheep and a little tether from there to the chickens. And if you wanted, it's really not a big deal. You could actually put a jumper wire between the two. So you could actually have one tether going from your main line out to the sheep or chickens, either one, and then have a jumper go from there over to the other net. It's really that simple. So when we put this bad boy on there, we're reading, like I said, I mean, the voltage is, is absolutely sound. I haven't used a, um, this, I, I should point this out. I haven't used a solar charger that was able to do this. We've done it in the past, in fact, We've tried and it, it, I think it, I can't remember where the, who made the solar charger, but um, that energizer, I don't remember, but the best I could do, even on one poultry net was about 1500 volts. And that's with nothing touching the bottom, not being grounded out anywhere. And that, that's the best it would do. I'm sure there are others out there that have kicked up, but they ain't cheap either. We're talking 500 bucks for the one we have. So, Maybe that's not the most economical way, but if you have one that is an AC charger, just run a trunk line out there, tether where you need it. I mean, the chickens could theoretically be over there. The sheep could be over here. It doesn't matter. And for the record, let me just point out also, there was a time in the past when we were running chicken tractors on steroids at one time, three at a time. I had three poultry nets going at the same time with a 30 mile charger. And they were still, believe me, birds weren't getting out, not unless somebody left it off, which happened quite often back in those days. So anyway, there you have it. We're blasting out about 5,000 volts on this fence. And this is Billy, the permaculture pimp daddy from Permapastures Farm. In fact, this time, because I got a new shirt, I'm the pasture-raised pimp from Permapastures Farm. We'll see you next time.